Hey Wildcats, Ed Bud here. I've got another scintillating selection of superb speed shoes for your sore eyes and sore wallets. Rung Chu Yeone is a spot where I look at some of the forthcoming releases and say whether I'm going to pick them up or not for review. It's not me making a judgement on the shoe at this stage, obviously I need to get it on foot and in hand. We got some stuff from Saucony today, also Adidas too. I'm going to try and fit one in from Under Armour. And a couple of interesting shoes that have appeared over the last few days. It's yay on A time, let's get to it. Thanks for joining me on today's Running Shoe Yay on A. If you're enjoying the channel, do help us out by hitting that subscribe button, but also giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. Danke schön. Good to be back in the shoe sanctuary, I've got to be honest. It was nice to go away, but it's always good to return to find that Beast has pretty much leveled the place. Okay, let's get to it. Shoe number one. Don't be afraid, people. This is just the Saucony Sinister. A shoe that appears to be super lightweight, but also very bendy. In fact, Saucony reckon on this being a key feature of the shoe, that being the flexibility of the upper materials. First time I've ever seen somebody get so excited about the fact it's bendy. I am reminded here of two things, the old Reebok Run Fast Pro, a shoe that was all P-backs and not much else, and of course, mummies as well. I mean the ones that are covered in bandages. Those wrappings on the side certainly suggest this is a lower distance speed shoe, perhaps one for 5k efforts or track work, and a super lightweight 154 grams in the US size 9, which is that sample size. Quite recently when we've been at Puma, I was a bit upset I'm not the sample size because everyone got to test out some of these very, very early versions of shoes, and I didn't because my feet are big like torpedoes. That striking fluorescent apo is a mixture of what looks like stretchy flyknit, found on the Vaporfly 4% flyknit, down the, through the middle there. A thin and transparent mesh on the toe box and the side panels, along with a heel counterless rear. Ooh, my soul. The other thing that's a bit eye-watering, aside from the colour of the upper, is the price. Apparently going to be about 165 Earth credits here in the UK. So that's closer to something like the Adidas Takumi Sen 8 or 9. That's quite a high price to pay, I guess, for a niche shoe. This one's only going to be for the select few. I think it's probably going to be too low a stack for a few people, and I think it might even sort of limit its use, perhaps to 10k. Or perhaps if you're a lightly built runner like myself. Even the outsole there reminds me a little bit of that Reebok Run Fast Pro. The pattern is a match, though, with a more carved out arch area, further weight relieving the shoe. I can't help but want to step into the haunted mansion, though, that is the Saucony Sinister, and shine the light around a little bit to see what I can see. I'll give it a yay on this one whenever it drops. I'll have to start saving up the pennies. Shoe 2. Loads of people on the channel have been asking me to review the Supernova 2 from Adidas. There's loads of colorways of it out now. Bit of an interesting one. I think people are hoping for a Boston 9 replacement and it kind of looks like this is the closest thing to that shoe yet. Boost material there in the rear as we had in the Boston and what appears to be a light strike wrapping to the forefoot area is about as close as we've seen to that Boston shoe though the same issue remains with weight. We got a 275 gram sample size weight here that was about what I had in my UK 11 of the Boston 9. So sadly, I don't think this is going to be mimicking the boost and light strike combination that we had in that shoe. That was a really stable option, very light, very forgiving, great grip as well from the Continental outsole. And it was easy to get a good lockdown. I guess the saving grace here with the Supernova 2 is the price, only 89 Earth credits. Even makes the Pegasus look expensive, I suppose, doesn't it? Could provide some nice, reliable cushion for those with such requirements. I bet you can even find it cheaper as well if you search around with a code or two. If they just removed the excessive boost material around the heel, that would probably reduce it further. That's something that we seem to be seeing within all of the Ultra Boost models from Alidas over the last few years. Just a bit bulbous. An interesting model, given me a little bit of hope perhaps but it said nay on the supernova 2 unless i get some sort of chorus of discontent from all of the viewers i don't really see that one happening shoe three it was the boston marathon on monday i was very lucky to be in attendance and watching the incredible feats or feet 
I suppose. Now, Kipchoge was running in a new version of his Alpha Fly 2 shoe. Was I really surprised to see that when other people were wearing like an Alpha Fly 3? We've seen loads of other Nike athletes wearing that shoe, so why not Kipchoge? It looks like there's a new colorway of it set to drop with a slightly off white midsole foam there, complete with a red stripe across the midfoot band and red AirPods to match. Quite a simple version of the shoe, really. It isn't all that different from that prototype one that I picked up. Although mine looks sadly sullied now, I suppose. I can see fans of the GOAT perhaps picking this one up. He does seem to prefer those more subtle versions of his signature shoe, and this one's about as subtle as you're gonna get. I think Nike will probably post this one up for sale relatively soon. Sadly, he didn't really get the incredible sort of result and time that he was after in Boston. And I think with Kipchoge perhaps not featuring on the podium there, it makes this one a bit of a hard sell. I mean, he's still the GOAT, of course, but it's getting a little bit like the sort of Jordan line now. Loads and loads of signature shoes. Where does it stop, I suppose? And when you've got a hefty price tag, which is more than anything else, practically, it's a nay for me on this one. I'm certainly not in the market for a second pair of Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. It's just yet another colorway of a shoe that's set to be superseded very soon by an Alpha Fly 3. It's like a hard nay. It's just for the hardcore fans only. Shoe 4. Now the women's champion at Boston was Helen Abiri. She produced a superb surge towards the end of the race, an absolutely fantastic time. 2 hours 21.38, outstanding performance for someone who was running only their second marathon apparently. I can't quite believe it but it's true. Through the fog and the drizzle, hard conditions really, she came through to be on top. Let's not take away from that great performance but Let's talk about the shoes. Obviously, people want to know about the shoes. We see an on-running model. Can it be the same one as pictured here? When I think on-running, it's all about those cloud tech pods. There are some small little cutouts there on the side wall of the midsole, but it certainly seems to feature a more complete footbed in the midsole area. Very transparent upper here with a typical midfoot band to improve the wrap around the foot. Standard reinforced eyelets here, rather than those lace loops and extra little pieces that on tend to include with their uppers. The little padding in the heel area and the profile back there isn't all that different to the Nike Invincible 3. Call me crazy, but I think it's close. What do you reckon, people? Simply looking at the foam midsole here isn't going to give us the full picture about this special shoe. I think there could be quite a cup, in fact, of foam around the heel area there. Otherwise, it's going to be a very aggressive drop. I don't think that's what we've got. Very little exists about this shoe, really. I've trawled the internet. I even got Beast having a go on the old laptop. Very slow at typing, and Beast has scratched off all of the actual uh, letter markings on the laptop keyboard now. I wouldn't suggest that this is a massive departure from some of the other shoes that we've got around right now, which does beg the question, is it an on shoe, if you see what I mean? It doesn't really have any of that cloud tech stuff. Does like the upper now simply give us the difference between all of these shoes? They are starting to look a bit similar aside from the price. I'll give this a tentative yay for the time being until we know a little bit more about it. That's what I want to see. All that aside though, well done to Helen Abiri on that fantastic performance. Right, I'm going to shoehorn one more in today, breaking the tradition of four shoes in running shoe yay on a. We got a fifth. Very excited to see that there's a new Under Armour super shoe launching. We do know more about this one. The Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite will be arriving in April. Now, a section of the midsole here is still going to be Under Armour Flow. I really like that stuff in the Flow Velocity Wind 2. It seems to be topped with a super critical section. I think it's a TPU material. Interesting to see that this shoe has been in development for a long time. There's been loads of different prototypes. Clearly, we've got some type of plate in there, but you You've got a combination of foams that are very different in terms of the properties. I do remember back in the New York Marathon, somebody did in fact win wearing this shoe. Sharon Lockheedy was wearing the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. Does look like we have an 8mm drop in this one, so they're sticking very closely to that winning formula. Looks like the shoe's coming in around £225, so it's in the very competitive super shoe area, and round about 210 grams in the sample size. So maybe a little bit of extra weight there from some of the other models. Given how much I liked the flow velocity wind, I'm really quite keen to see what Under Armour have come up with here. They've got some different ideas going on. I'm always happy to see a bit of innovation. As such, I think it's going to be a yay, in fact, from me for the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. 
Okay, that's all the shoes for today's yay or nay. Let me know what you think of these selections down in the comments. Musical interlude time, and I'm really excited about this one. I love Ben Folds. He always comes up with some wonderful melodies, some very expressive piano playing. He's got a new album coming out soon called What Matters Most. I believe that is set to drop on the 2nd of June. The track you want to check out though that they've put out as a preview is called Winslow Gardens. Later in the track it features one of the most beautiful, subtle bits of piano that I've heard Ben Folds play in a long time. He kind of drops out all the other instrumentation. You've got this fantastic, ghostly, haunting sort of melody, very sentimental. And I love the strange time signature used in the track as well. I think there's some like seven eight in there just drops a few beats and it really does make the track fresh like you're eating a whole lime go and check this one out guys you will not be disappointed winslow gardens from ben folds hope you enjoyed today's yayone and you've really enjoyed the interviews recently with todd folker and ned brockman an absolute ball talking to those guys really inspiring fellows hit that subscribe button click the bell below for notifications also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you